All right, so in the last example, we saw how to display text and some of the changes that we can make to how the text appears. Um, but really, you know, we don't want to be limited to just default fonts on people's computers. We want to have a lot of control over this. And luckily, we can load a font really easily with P5.js and use it in our sketch. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is find what font you want to use. Um, if you're on a Mac, there's this really awesome program already installed on your computer called Fontbook. And if you open it, it looks like this. Um, you can browse all the fonts that are on your computer. Um, you can change the text that's displayed here. So um, you could just click and write programming is fun or whatever you want to have it say. Um, Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog is a common phrase for this because it displays every letter in the English language um, all in one sentence. But we can do whatever we want here and just kind of look around and see all these different fonts. Um, if you're looking for a source to find more fonts to install, um, the assignment for this project includes a link to a bunch of really great resources. Um, so I want to use um, this font here, Chivo. I really like this. This is kind of a nice, funky one. Um, and I want to um, use them in my project. I need to find where they are on my computer. And again, I'm really sorry, Windows users. I have no idea how to do this for you um, if you're on a Mac. This is what I'm used to. Um, so I think I want to include um, a couple different. So some fonts might have only one style. Um, here I can I have a light, which is really thin, all the way to black, which is a really heavy weight. And let's go ahead and we can use maybe black, italic, and the light. So if I right click this and do show in Finder, it's going to open up um, where those fonts are stored on my computer. In my sketch then, I'm gonna make an assets folder or you could call this fonts if you wanted to keep them separate. And I'm gonna copy this file over. Now you don't wanna move it cause then it'll break the font for your computer. Uh, but I wanna use Chivo black italic and Chivo light. So I'm gonna copy both of those. And then we can close this and then we don't need font book anymore. Um, you could rename these files if they're really long or have spaces in them or something like that. And then um, using the fonts is really easy. Um, we just create variables. It really works the same way as images. So I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm on a variable called light and one called black. And then we add preload here, which as a reminder, preload runs before setup and will wait until it's finished, which is great for loading stuff like images and fonts. And then we just use load font. So it's really the same as an image Chivo And then black works the same way. That file is called, I think it's called black italic. Let me double check. Black italic. Yes, there we go. Great. And this is a good um, time maybe just to save it. Uh, I have browser sync running over here and just verify in my console that I don't have any errors, which I don't. Perfect. Um, then I've got my canvas all set up here. I'm also going to do text align uh, center in the middle and then baseline for vertical. That's going to be the bottom of the letters. And then in my draw, um, let's just use these two different fonts. So I can do background 50, fill of 255, and no stroke. And then I can say text font light and then if I draw text uh, width divided by two height divided by two now it's going to display it in that font it's real small maybe we can make that a little bigger text size there we go so there's the light and then if I change my text font to black and to text We'll just go down a little bit. Now you can see two different texts and we can alternate back and forth between them and do some really cool stuff. Um, that's all you need to know about loading um, different fonts. You can have as many as you want, give them different variables. Um, so if you wanna jump to the next thing you can, uh, but I'm gonna do a little fun thing here with these um, that I think will be uh, just kind of put this to use. Um, but feel free to skip ahead if you want. So I wanna fill the screen with kind of a checkerboard of um, different of, of text. 
which will be kind of fun. So I'm going to do that in um, two for loops. So I'm going to have y, y is less than height, y plus equals, let's see. So um, I'm going to create a spacing of 50 pixels, but we could experiment with that. We'll do the same in the x direction. And then um, as I move through this, I want to draw my text. So I can say push, translate, x, y. Now you wouldn't need translate, um, though we're going to do some rotation in a minute. So we do for that. Um, you could just draw it at, at the position, x and y. But I think translate's nice, because now I'm thinking in terms of 0, 0. And then um, we need some way of, well, let's just draw some letters first, and then we can see how we can switch these up. So I'm going to say. Um, text font black, text size of 64, and let's draw a little Q here at 0, 0. And let's just see if we get a grid. Cool. So I've got a grid of Qs already. This is kind of dynamic and cool, just repeating these letter forms, making this really kind of nice pattern here. Um, Oh, so you might see that I'm getting some warnings and errors down here. Um, these really are not a big deal. It's looking for an icon to display up in the bar here, and it's not finding it. And then it's some warnings saying there's some parts of the P5.js library that aren't maybe working quite as they should, but it's not affecting how anything is working here. Um, OK, so if I want to do a checkerboard then, I think I want to do um, have a variable called alternate, if I can spell that. Um, and this will be a Boolean, and I'm just going to swap this, and that'll let my letter change um, every other. So then I can say if alternate will do this. Let's say, yep, we'll do our Q. Else, we'll do text font light, text size, we'll make it smaller, and we'll do a Z at 0, 0. And then we want to. Um, switch alternate. So I can say alternate equals not alternate, which is going to um, just flip the Boolean back and forth. And so now if I run it, I'll see what, uh, well, I messed something up. Oh, I missed my last uh, zero in text down here. So, you know, my warnings and uh, console stuff shows up just like on the online editor. And there we go. Pretty cool. And I have one last thing. I want this to rotate. So um, every time through here, I'm going to say angle equals map. I'm going to use mouse x between 0 and width and go between um, negative pi and pi. And then um, you could do your rotate right here, but I want them to rotate in opposite directions. So the z's and the q's will kind of do like this. So I'm going to do that inside my if statement. I'm going to say rotate angle here and rotate negative angle here. And let's see, I don't think I missed anything. So we're going to try this. Now, as I move my cursor, you can see they rotate and um, they go in opposite directions, which is pretty fun. And you could try changing what letter is being displayed um, and, you know, or character. It could be anything and see how that changes the overall look. So that's pretty fun. That ampersand is really crazy looking. Anyway, so that's how you load multiple fonts. And um, just an example of how you could put that to use. Any place that you're using any other drawing command, fonts can be, you know, text can be put in there. Um, we'll see some more examples of cool stuff you can do in the next few demos.